Hello friends. Now in this uh, video, we would discuss about one of the anti-thyroid drugs, uh, which we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. In the previous video, we have already discussed or classified all the anti-thyroid drugs which uh, were seen. So now in this chapter, in this video, we will learn about the anti-thyroid drugs. So the anti-thyroid drugs are thioamides. So these are basically anti-thyroid drugs. These drugs, uh, what is their mechanism of action? Now in pharmacology we always deal with some headings which include the mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, side effects, uses, contraindications and if possible interactions. So what is mechanism of action of anti-thyroid drugs? These anti-thyroid drugs bind to thyroid peroxidase. If you remember, I just show uh, that uh, synthesis of thyroid once again, thyroid peroxidase, and thus they prevent oxidation of iodide to iodine, thus resulting in inhibition of iodination of tyrosine. Residues and it also inhibit coupling of MIT and DIT to form T3 and T4. So, this is one of the mechanism of action. So, let me show you the previous. Uh, diagram which we have drawn yeah so this anti-thyroid drugs basically inhibit this thyroid peroxidase right so this is inhibited by anti-thyroid drugs so this thyroid peroxidase whenever it is inhibited there is no conversion of iodine to iodide that is one and the second action is the thyroglobulin, uh, the tyrosine residue present in the thyroglobulin, this cannot be combined with iodine to form MIT and DIT because even for this, there it is necessary that thyroid peroxidase should be there. And even the exocytosis of thyroglobulin also requires thyroid peroxidase enzyme. So all these were blocked in anti-thyroid drugs, right? So now, this is one of the mechanism of action of anti-thyroid drugs. So, due to all these, there is, all these, both of these leads to uh, uh, no thyroid or decreased synthesis of thyroid. Uh, but if you know the thyroid hormone is present in colloid, which is stored in colloid. So, the thyroid hormone in colloid is used for, its, for, for our purposes. So, there is a uh, depletion of thyroid hormone in colloid for its activities and gradually over a time there is decreased T3 and T4 right this is what is seen over a time over a period of time so uh, this is one of the action and this thyromides do not uh, uh, they don't uh, act on any other uh, action like interfering of uh, iodine trapping or they don't even bother or they don't affect any other uh, processes. So, these anti-thyroid drugs don't uh, produce any goiter or they don't uh, affect the release of T3 or T4. They only act on these two steps, this step prevent thyroid peroxidase, they bind to thyroid peroxidase and prevent oxidation of iodide to iodine or it may directly prevent the coupling of MIT and DIT but it has no role in any other issue. Uh, as I have said there are three anti-thyroid drugs basically propyl thiouracil, methimazole and carbimazole. So coming to 
प्रोपाइल थायो थायो यूरासिल हैज ए स्पेशल फंक्शन प्रोपाइल थायो यूरासिल हैज ए न्यू फंक्शन सो दैट इज इट इनहिबिट्स कन्वर्शन ऑफ T4 टू T3 पेरिफेरली राइट इट इनहिबिट्स द कन्वर्शन ऑफ T4 टू T3 पेरिफेरली by dehydrogenase siphon so this dehydrogenase d1 is nothing but dehydrogenase uh, type 1 so propyl thiouracil mainly inhibit the conversion of t4 to t1 t3 by dehydrogenase type 1 so this also contributes to antithyroid effects but they don't have methimazole and carbimazole don't have this action methimazole and carbimazole no above t4 to t3 action right so this is the action mechanism of action of anti thyroid drugs coming to after mechanism of action we discuss about pharmacokinetics the pharmacokinetics of the anti thyroid drugs are they are mainly oral absorption right distributed in milk in body basically they enter milk also so and they cross placenta so that is the reason why these anti thyroid drugs should not be given mm. in pregnancy because they may cross the placenta and destroy or they may affect the fetal uh, thyroid hormone and they are metabolized by liver and excreted in urine next all these anti thyroid drugs which are propyl thiouracil methimazole and carbimazole they are basically concentrated in urine concentrated in thyroid that is the reason why they act better at the in the thyroid hormone rather than other sites so the effect they they even have intra thyroid t half is longer and then carbimazole coming to carbimazole carbimazole basically works by converting itself into methimazole which is longer acting right so this is the pharmacokinetics of uh, uh, anti thyroid drugs coming to adverse effects of anti thyroid drugs or side effects side effects include uh, one is hypothyroid because these uh, inhibit the thyroid at some stage there is a chance of developing hypothyroidism and when there is hypothyroidism there is increased tsh which may lead to development of goiter uh, this occurs only when over treatment and it is reversible on stopping drug on stopping drug it reverses it rever it reverts back to normal uh, it is uh, this why is there a goiter this is because hypothyroidism leads to increased tsh this increased tsh leads to goiter formation right so the side effects the other important side effects include uh, mainly gi intolerance right and then skin rashes are also seen and sometimes joint pains are seen there is loss or graying of hair
loss of taste fever liver damage may also occur right uh, the most serious adverse effect include a granulocytosis it is reversible but it is serious among carbamazole propyl thiouracil and methimazole which is most commonly used to say carbamazole is more commonly used but uh, propyl thiouracil this is preferred for thyroid stone why because the reason is this uh, inhibits conversion of t4 to t3 basically by d1 mm. right now what are the uses of anti thyroid drugs the uses of anti thyroid drugs are one in definitive therapy for the graves disease or toxic nodular goiter or secondly preoperatively in surgery in thyrotoxic patients sometimes it is used along with iodine 131 right these um, anti thyroid drugs are used in surgery when compared to iodine what you know iodine 131 can also be used but the advantages of anti thyroid drugs these include one no surgical risk or scar or chances of injury to parathyroids which are present uh, superior and inferior of thyroids and secondly hypothyroidism is reversible even if seen it's reversible and the third one is used even in children right this is advantages of anti thyroid drugs in surgery than iodine 131 if we come to disadvantages the main disadvantage is prolonged treatment is needed next relapse is high there may be drug toxicity and these anti thyroid drugs are contraindicated in pregnancy because they may cross the placenta but methimazole is safe in pregnancy
so the antithyroid drugs so in this class we have dealt about the antithyroid drugs in the antithyroid drugs we have dealt with mechanism of action of antithyroid drugs pharmacokinetics of antithyroid drugs and we have also completed the side effects of antithyroid drugs and uh, uses of antithyroid drugs with their advantages and disadvantages in our next class we would deal with iodides and iodines Okay then bye